Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. The idea that I'm going to be talking about this evening is that our minds are not confined to the insides of our heads. They're not all in our brains. What I'm going to suggest is our minds are fields, fields of activity rooted in our brains but which stretch out far beyond them. We're used to the idea of fields stretching out beyond material systems from magnets. The field of a magnet extends much further than the limit of the iron bar. And the field of a cell phone extends much further than the object you hold in your hand. If it didn't, it wouldn't work. So we're very familiar with the idea of fields rooted in material systems that stretch out beyond them. What I'm going to suggest is that our minds are fields rooted in the physical system of our brain, but stretching out beyond them um, in every act of perception. And I think a lot of phenomena that at present seem paranormal actually seem perfectly normal as soon as we adopt the idea of the extended mind. Because this leads to a very different way of the way that, uh, a very different idea of the way intelligence works, it has implications for artificial intelligence. And actually, these, were, these implications were uh, seen with remarkable clarity right at the very beginning of the entire field. In his classic 1950 paper on machine intelligence, Alan Turing uh, made a comment that's very little known in the world of artificial intelligence, uh, which is very relevant to what I'm saying this evening. The, you remember that his test was whether you could, if you were conversing with a machine or a person, if you couldn't tell the person from the machine, you were in a separate room, uh, then that would be a test of whether the machine had intelligence. It was a very famous uh, idea. But there was one thing that Turing thought the computer couldn't do. That was telepathy. Turing was convinced that, um, in his own words, the statistical evidence for telepathy is overwhelming. Turing was convinced that it existed, and he thought that the way to run a test, to test between a person and a machine, would be to do a telepathy test. Here's the account of it. Given that you had a human being gifted with ESP in one room and a computer in another, the player in his imitation game could ask the two candidates to guess a given sequence of cards. Since the computer using a random number generator would be able to guess only at chance levels, it would soon become clear which of the two was the human being and which was the computer. Fascinating that he should have um, taken what's really an implicit um, idea the, uh, in telepathy, that the mind is extended beyond the brain, as the thing that would distinguish between computers and, um, and human beings. Well, what I'm going to talk about now is the idea of the extended mind, the mind beyond the brain, in ordinary visual perception. I'm not talking now about obscure marginal phenomena. I'm talking about mainstream phenomena happening all the time, like you seeing me standing here. The normal way of understanding visual perception is known to everyone in this room. It's, of course, that lights reflected from me goes through the electromagnetic field, enters your eye, through the lens, inverted images on your retinas, changes in the cone cells, electrical impulses up the optic nerve, changes in the brain, electrical and chemical changes in various regions of the brain. So far, so good. Um, this has been studied in great detail. But then comes something very mysterious. You form a conscious image of me. There's nothing in any of the standard um, computing way that people think about vision to explain why you should have a conscious image at all. It should just be a matter of wires processing information. But in fact, you do have a conscious image of me. And the second mystery, rarely discussed, but uh, very problematic when you think about it, is that your uh, conscious image of me is supposed to be a kind of virtual reality show going on inside your head. It's all supposed to be inside your head because the conventional assumption is that the mind is the brain. It's all in the head. Now, I imagine that none of you are experiencing your image of me as being located inside your head. I'm guessing that you're experiencing it as being located right here where I'm standing. And the theory I want to put forward is so simple that it's really hard to understand. And that is that your image of me is located right here. It's an image in your mind. It's interpreted by your mind, but it's not inside your head. It's outside your head where it seems to be. 
So I'm suggesting vision involves a two-way process, an inward movement of light and an outward projection of the entire visual world. Everything you see is projected out. In a sense, your mind is reaching out to touch what you're looking at. The virtual reality show isn't in your head. It's projected out and coinciding with the actual world. Sometimes it doesn't. Then you have an illusion or a hallucination. But usually it does. And if it didn't, uh, we'd bump into things all the time and wouldn't survive very long. When you think about the conventional view that it's all inside the head, it leads to a very absurd paradox, uh, which very few people actually um, think through. If the whole room that you're experiencing, all this perceptual world is inside your head, then if you look outside when you're outdoors and you look up at the stars, then they're inside your head too. So your skull must be beyond the sky. Um, this is the subject of a recent paper in Brain and Behavioral Science, um, where someone's pointed out this is the implication of the normal view. The skull is beyond the sky. I'm, in, I'm saying the skull's right where it seems to be, and the perceptual world's out there. This is not a new theory. It's the theory advocated by Plato, is believed by most of the ancient Greeks and Romans, most of the uh, medieval philosophers. It's believed by traditional people all over the world, taught by Hindu and Tibetan sages. Um, the only people who don't believe it are people with a scientific education in the West for the last 350 years. And um, the, um, as a matter of fact, even young children um, uh, believe that vision's a two-way process. Jean Piaget, in his studies on children's intellectual development, showed that until the age of 10 or 11, the average child believed that vision involved uh, projection out as well as a movement of light in. However, he said by the age of 10 or 11, the average child learns the correct view, which is that thoughts and images are invisible things located inside the head. Now, most of us assimilated that idea when we were far too young to think about it or certainly to challenge it. And so it becomes an implicit assumption of our whole culture, even though no one's ever seen an image inside anyone's head. There's virtually no evidence for it whatsoever, and yet it's almost universally believed. It's a very deep-seated habit of thought. Even in the modern world, a number of philosophers have challenged the view and put forward a view similar to the one I'm advancing, including... Henri Bergson, the French philosopher, Alfred North Whitehead, the British philosopher, and several philosophers working today. There's a British one called Max Vellmans, who is advancing this view in a very sophisticated and uh, convincing way. But I'm not talking about philosophy here. I'm talking about a scientific hypothesis. If our minds reach out to touch what we're looking at, then it means that we may even be able to affect things by looking at them. And this leads to quite a number of predictions. Imagine that you're looking at another person from behind. They don't know you're there. They can't see you, hear you, smell you, touch you. And you just stare at their back. Could they detect your gaze? Well, the answer is, this is a common experience. Most people have had the experience of turning around to find someone staring at them or staring at someone and making them turn around. Surveys show that over 90% of the population have had these experiences. So I'm guessing that most people in, 